In the Democratic Republic of Congo, an attack by the Allied Democratic Forces, the ADF rebels, on the territory of Beni in North Kivu province has killed five civilians. According to the French news agency, the ADF is a Uganda Muslim majority rebel coalition operating in eastern Congo. For more on the ADF attack, I spoke with reporter Al Katanti Sibiti Jaffa in the eastern democratic city of Goma. Locals of Mavivi and neighbor roads north of Beni were attacked by ADF last night. In this attack, five people were being killed, many were injured. And this morning, rescue teams were looking for bodies in streets and in the bush. It has been some time now since uh, an attack on Beni. Why do you think the ADF decided now to attack the city? I think the reason why ADF attacked the city of Beni after many times, because the last attack in the city of Beni uh, had been more than one year ago. ADF was operating in the region of Beni, but not inside the city of Beni. But now as Operation Shuja, which is composed by UPDF, Ugandan Army and FRDC, is fighting against ADF in the forest, and now ADF is thinking about to attack the city of Beni as the forest is so dangerous for them. Fortunately for them, it looks that even the city is now protected, and now we can say that ADF is in danger as they are losing a lot of fighters in the forest, and they also lost some fighters when attacking Beni. So what's been the reaction of the DRC army, or the authorities in the region? The reaction of DRC armed forces was instantaneously because uh, troops close to the city, as it was in the city of Beni, responded directly on the ADF, and they succeeded to neutralize three rebels among those who attacked. And this is the reason why the attack didn't kill a lot of people. You know that when ADF attacked somewhere without protection, they killed dozens of people, but this time they only killed five people. What is not nothing, but it's a few number than what we have to record every time when ADF attack is on. Casualties are receiving medical treatment in hospital in Beni. You know, after a um, terrorist attack, many people must be injured. And some of them had also a mental trauma because they saw people being killed or being injured. And all of them are getting care at Beni Hospital. That was reporter Jaffa Al-Katanti speaking with us from the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo capital. Entry entitled Bobby Wine, the People's President, about Uganda singer turned politician Robert Chakulai Setamu, popularly known as Bobby Wine, is one of four nominated for the 2024 Oscar Awards. The Ugandan opposition leader says he is very humbled to see their country story making it to the to such a huge global platform. But Uganda Foreign Minister Henry Okello Oyam tells viewers Douglas Umpuga that Western governments support people who are against elected and legal institutions and that even the most misleading of information is accepted as truth. My only comment is this, that mm. Western countries are so gullible to everything and anything that uh, anybody that talks uh, negatively against uh, the, government, uh, the government of the day institution. And uh, the, the government, Western countries spend more time trying to support uh, people who are against elected or the legal institutions of the day. And uh, whatever those groups tell the Western government, even the worst of lies, uh, even uh, the, the most misleading of information, uh, the, the Western countries and their viewers are so gullible to these uh, uh, stories that, uh, you know, their legs uh, go uh, waxy and wobbly uh, to the, such, such stories. So I, I wish them all the very best. But uh, for, for us in Uganda, the facts speak, speak for itself. And uh, Uganda, and, and in spite of all that they throw at Uganda, which are misleading, uh, Uganda has managed to prove them wrong. So I've not watched that movie that has been nominated for, uh, but uh, it will not have any impact 
on this government, if anybody uh, thought it would have an impact on this government, they're misplaced. And uh, he says uh, he's now managed to reach an international audience and to what ah, he calls ah, expose, ah. expose the, what is the undemocratic situation in the country. How will the government counter that? By action. By action. We, we have proven over and over again. Uh, just the, la the last few, over the last one week, we have had the most successful back-to-back -back, uh, summits that could be held in, in any, any part of Africa. It was fully attended beyond our wildest imagination by delegations coming from all over the world. Yet, uh, uh, less than a month ago, there were allegations uh, of uh, and travel advices being uh, issued by Western governments that uh, tourists and investors should not come to Uganda and, uh, because there is violence in Uganda, there is terrorism in Uganda, and they'll be injured in Uganda. Yet, that has been disproved beyond doubt uh, that it was all lies fabricated and then misleading because the attendance of the, of the international community at this summit was beyond our emergency imagination. An official in Mali says more than 70 people are dead after an informal gold mine collapsed late last week and as such continues amid fears the toll could rise. Kalim Bethe, a senior official at the government's National Geology and Mining Directorate, confirmed the details to the Associated Press on Wednesday and called it an accident. It was not immediately clear what caused the collapse that occurred on Friday and was reported on Tuesday in a Ministry of Mines statement that estimated several miners dead. The corrupts occurred in Kangaba district in the southwestern Kolikolo region. Such accidents are common in Mali, Africa's third largest gold producer, Atisano miners. Small scale informal ones are often accused of ignoring safety measures, especially in remote areas. The state must bring order to this artisano mining sector to avoid these kinds of accidents in the future, Bethe said. The Ministry of Mines statement deeply regretted the collapse and urged miners as well as communities living near mining sites to comply with safety requirements.